Hi everybody, and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial of the Blueing Olive Flashback Bar Merger. This is a fly that was created by John Barr. He's also the same guy that wrote this book, Bar Flies. This is a book that I've referenced a couple times during my videos, and for good reason. Not only does this book have a lot of John's famous patterns, it also gives all the pictures that you need to really tie these patterns step by step, variations, and also how to fish them. So it's truly just a wonderful resource that I recommend. Now, if John's name is still really not jogging your memory, let me tell you some of his flies, and I'm sure that will do it. For starters, we have the Copper John. We have the Jumbo John, the Graphic Caddis, the BC Hopper, the Slump Buster, the Meat Whistle, and of course, this Bar Emerger. Let me tell you a little bit more about this pattern. John was fishing approximately 30 years ago during a bluing olive or a PMD hatch and he just wasn't able to catch these fish and he realized that they weren't taking the duns. Instead, they were taking the emerger stage of the mayfly. For mayflies, they travel from nymph to emerger to dun. Partway through that nymphal stage, they basically crack open the nymphal skin, the dun crawls out, dries the wings, and flies off. But it's during that transition when the fly's emerging that they're very vulnerable to fish. And John wanted to take advantage of that, hence the bar emerger. This pattern's meant to be kind of that in-between pattern. So if you think about it from this sense, if you're fishing this pattern, this is a pattern you want to fish a couple of different ways. For starters, if you believe the fish are really close up to the surface, they're not quite taking duns, but just under the surface, you'll want to fish this pattern unweighted as I'm tying it today. If you see fish really coming out of the water and going back in, that really should tell you that they're probably taking a fly a little bit lower in the water column, they're coming up to take that pattern, and their momentum is just carrying them up out of the water and back down. Hence, you'll want to add a little bit of weight to this pattern, or a bead head. I'm going to be tying this one the way that John recommends, and this is really more of a traditional tie with the addition of that flashback material. But there's no weight on this pattern, and it gives, that, gives me some flexibility. I can fish it directly on the, the surface. I can get it a little bit wet and fish it in the film, or I can add a split shot anywhere between 6 and 12 inches above the fly and allow that, that pattern to just go a little bit lower in the water column. So there's lots of different ways to fish it, and I really do vary it until I start picking up fish. Then I'll just stick to that one method until something changes. So keep that in mind. The other variation that I'm really going to suggest to you is to vary the color of the thorax to match some naturals in your local areas. In this case, I'm going to be tying this for the Blueing Olive or BWO, but you could also tie it for the Sulphur, for the Hendrickson, basically for any mayfly out there. It's really that, evil, it's really that easy to just adjust this pattern accordingly. So now that you have a little bit of history about this pattern, I'm going to show you a finished version of it, just the finished picture. I'll list all the materials, then I'll begin tying the BWO Flashback Bar Emerger. Alright, let's start tying the Blueing Olive Flashback Bar Emerger. For starters, I have an Allen fly fishing hook in the vise. This is their N205BL. I'll tie this anywhere between sizes 16 down to 22, 24, occasionally even a size 14, so I will go a little bit larger depending on which mayfly I'm attempting to represent. I really like this Allen fly fishing hook because it's got a great bend to it and it's just perfect for tying emergers. I'm going to grab a little bit of some very fine diameter, I believe this is around a 12 watt gray thread, and just build a little base by tying it in directly behind the eye. And then I want to take this a little bit down the bend. At that point, I'm just going to grab a brown hackle. This is great if you have a bunch of those old hackles lying around that you're not quite sure what to do with. And I'm going to pull about 12 fibers off of this. So grab a nice clump of fibers. Don't worry so much about keeping the tails straight, uh, evening those out just simply tie it in because we're going to be trimming that tail section. I'm going to wrap forward a few times, just grab my scissors, cut away the tag ends. I'm going to trap those, 
wrap back and I want to make sure that as I'm wrapping back I'm really pulling these fibers down so they bend around the curve of the hook. That's perfect. Next time I grab a little bit of dubbing because this is a BW, BWO I'm going to be grabbing some spiky dubbing by SLF. This is their squirrel dubbing. The color that I'm using today is um, brown olive. Just perfect to blend. Or just perfect to really uh, give this fly that, that great look to match the, the natural. There's a little bit of sparkle in this squirrel spiky dubbing, which just is really nice. When I apply it, I want to make sure that I have a taper going so that it's tapered from the back to the front, small in the back, larger as I get up towards the thorax. So I'm going to try to keep a tight dub, though this stuff is, as its name says, spiky. I just keep a little extra pinch over here in case I need some more. I'm going to work my way up. And John recommends tying nearly the whole way to the eye. Then when you get to the eye, I'm just going to pull these fibers back a little bit because I don't want them coming out past the eye. And then you just wrap back a little bit. After I wrap back a little ways, I'm going to grab our flashback material. It's just going to be using some clear tinsel for this. After I have that locked in, then I'm going to finish wrapping back about a third of the way back. I want to allow some room to build up our... Um, our thorax. I have a few more fibers in there. I just want to get those fibers out of the way. Okay, and before we build up our thorax, we're going to add the legs. For our legs, I'm just going to add some blue done hackle fibers. And just like before, I'm going to pull a pinch out, approximately a dozen. We're not going to worry again about straightening them. I'm just going to tie them in by the butts. And then just like with that flashback, I'm just going to make sure that they're, they're locked in place going back about approximately a third of the way. Okay. Next, we're going to add in our thorax. I'm going to be using some super fine dry fly dubbing, Adam's Gray for the head. I'm going to wrap this the whole way up to the eye, though I don't want to crowd it. I, I want to leave a little bit of space to finish off the fly. That's more than enough. All right, once I hit this point, I'm going to start moving everything forward. I'm first going to grab the entire clump of hackle fibers, make sure that they're firm. And by firm, I mean I'm really holding them tight coming forward. I'm going to lock them in place with two or three wraps. Before I do so, I just want to make sure they're even, coming straight. Hold them tight. There's their second. And now third wrap. I'm going to do the same thing with this, uh, with this tinsel. Bring it forward. Make sure it's lined up straight once it is. A couple wraps. And next I'm just going to pull it straight back because we need to get it out of the way. I'm going to wrap back a little bit. I'm going to be trimming this tag end, but first I want to bring back my legs. To bring these back, I'm going to separate them into two clusters. I'm just going to do this with my fingers. I'm just showing you basically what's going to happen. And as I bring them back, I want them to be going parallel to the body. Okay. 
Okay, there's the cluster on your side. And there's the cluster on my side. Before I finish everything off, I want to first, I'm going to cut this tinsel out of the way because I realized if I cut, if I finish my head first, then cut the tinsel, sometimes those leg fibers will go a little crazy. So I want to cut that as close as possible. Then I'm just going to pull the fibers back one more time. Just place a couple more wraps to ensure they're locked in place. Wrap back forward. A half hitch. And then my whip finish. I'll get the thread out of there. And I'm going to trim first the legs. John recommends having these legs going just past the thorax. So I'm going to hold them past the thorax. I'm basically going to hold, it, hold them on top of the thorax. And then get a nice cut in there to make sure they're all even. And do the same on the side facing you. And then for the tail, he recommends the tail approximately half of the length of the body. Just like that. Now to finish this fly and to kind of clean it up, I like to get all these excess fibers out of here from the dubbing. Even though that spikiness is intended to be like that, for this emerger, I want some of those thicker fibers out of the way. So I'm just going to grab a pair of hackle pliers and just reach up there and grab some of them out. I want a little bit of a slender body and some of those lighter fibers really just seem to give this pattern a few of the colors that I really don't want sticking out from it. And once I have those little fibers pulled out of the way, you can now see my finished BWO flashback bar merger. Really simple little pattern to tie, extremely effective. I believe John considers this flashback one of his favorite go-to flies that there is. Extremely quick to tie. As you see, and the nice thing is that you can vary the color of that thorax to match the natural that you're going for. With that said, I'd like to thank Allen Fly Fishing for the use of their N205 BL hook. The BL stands for barbless, and if you'd like to check out this hook and others, feel free to do so at allenflyfishing.com. Thanks go out to all of you for viewing this fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page. Or as always, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks everybody for watching this fly tying tutorial of the BWO Flashback Bar Emerger.